if you're watching this, you're probably 16 or 17 years old, wanting to know how to start building your credit history, or maybe you're in your mid thirties wanting to improve your credit score so that you can be approved for one of the more prestigious credit cards like the American Express Platinum Card or the Chase Sapphire Reserve Card. Or maybe you're looking to improve your credit score so that you can be approved for a mortgage on your house. But no matter what the reason is, I'm gonna give you five simple and proven steps to increasing your credit score. What's up you guys, Gravy Fam I'm here back with another video. And yes, in today's video, I will be talking about how to improve your credit score or how to start building your credit history if you don't have one. And these are gonna be five simple and easy steps that you can take and proven steps that you can take, uh, which basically took me from having no credit history to having a credit score of around 790 to 810. And these are all steps that I've taken uh, to build my own personal credit history. So hopefully these steps can work for you. But before we get into the video, if you could all do me a huge favor and smash that like button and subscribe. It's a free way of supporting this channel. And also if you want two free stocks on Webull, I have my link down in the description below. With a lot of people unsure of how to start building credit or increasing their credit score, there's a variety of factors that come into play that affect the algorithm and similar to the YouTube algorithm where it's kind of like this mysterious thing that just pushes out random content. There are ways to game the system to work in your favor and we'll go through that in a little bit. So breaking it down, there are five main factors that go into building your credit score profile and here it is in order of importance. So first one would be payment history at 35%. Second would be amounts or amounts owned at 30%. Third would be your length of credit history at 15%. Number four would be variety of credit at 10%. And number five would be types of credit at 10%. Now I will go over all five of these factors, but I'll be mostly focusing on the first three because they carry the most weight. And if you're 18 or you know still young, number four and number five won't really affect you that much. So we'll just focus on the first three. So the first factor would be payment history. Now payment history weighs in the most at 35% and this just tracks your balances to see if you had any missed payments or late payments. Now on this channel, I teach people how to maximize their credit card benefits and I'm not really so much of a credit card repair channel, so to speak. However, if you follow my humble advice, credit card repair would be a byproduct whether you're wanting to maximize your benefits or just looking to repair your credit score. For me personally, I treat my credit cards as debit cards and once I know a transaction has processed and that it's not a like a suspicious transaction or anything like that, I usually pay it off way ahead of the due date. And that's just uh, for me personally, just good credit card habits to have. Now you can also turn on the auto pay feature. Uh, and I know most cards come with that feature, but that's just up to personal preference for me. Now it's important to note that even missing one payment can seriously affect your credit score. And depending if it was 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, the severity of it will increase the longer you take to pay it off. And on top of that, if you have a great credit score, maybe around 700 or 800, that one missed payment can affect you more than someone who has a low credit score of around 500. Now accidents can happen and maybe you forgot to pay off a $10 Macy's credit card bill. Now, whether it was $10 or $1,000, it's still a missed payment in the creditor's eyes and it carries the same weight. So main thing is you wanna track your spending and know what you're spending on each credit card if you have multiple credit cards. And if you get a negative mark on your credit score because of that missed payment, there are ways to remove it by calling a reconciliation line, for example, but I'll get into that in another video. But for now, just for this video in specific and not to go off too much on a tangent, main thing is you wanna keep track of your spendings, keep track of your budget and pay off your credit cards on time. Moving on to the second factor would be amounts owned. Now, this is a somewhat misunderstood topic, but let's dive into it. For example, let's just say you're a creditor and you're deciding to approve two people who are looking to get another credit card. Person A normally carries a balance of $1,000 while person B normally carries a balance of $6,000. On a risk factor, who would you think carries more risk of missing a payment if you approve them for a card? Well, if you said person B, kind of depends because I left out an important piece of information which was their credit limit. Now looking at person A, person A has a credit limit of $1,000 and person B has a credit limit of $100,000. Also known as credit utilization, 
person A is maxed out at 100% while person B is only utilizing 6% of his total credit line. Now, when it comes to credit utilization, this takes up 30% of the total weight of your credit profile, but there's a huge tip that I can give you to cheat the system. Now, some people think that you have to be spending a lot of money every single month to show the creditors that you're using their credit cards to increase your credit score, but I mean, that's, that's all a bunch of BS. All you need to do is really just the bare minimum, just put a few dollars on your credit card every single month, make sure you pay it off on time. Do that for maybe three months and watch your credit score go up. If you're someone who doesn't spend a lot of money every single month, then this is perfect for you because you could just put maybe like a snack on your credit card and make sure that you pay it off on time. Or even put like your subscription based things like Netflix or Apple Music and turn on auto pay so you don't even have to worry about paying off your card every single month. Everything would be done for you. And it really it's that simple. The third factor will be your length of credit history. Now with the length of credit history weighing in at 15%, this is another factor that has a fast and easy shortcut. However, there are a few exceptions. First off, let's start with the thought process of looking at it from the creditor's point of view. Let's just say you're applying for your very first credit card. Let's just say maybe the Discover It card and you're starting off fresh. You have no credit history whatsoever. To discover, they will view you as a high risk customer because they don't know if you'll be able to pay off any of the bills that you accumulate over time. Naturally, if you banked with Discover for over 20 plus years and had a great on time payment history, naturally you'd be considered less of a risk. On time percentage 100%. Another day, another migraine. <laughs> My on time percentage 12%. Now, the slow and steady way to increase your credit history over time would be to open up a credit card and hold on to that credit card forever. A general rule of thumb is that you never want to close any of your credit cards that you've held on to the longest, especially if there's no annual fees attached to those cards, because those cards will kind of serve as the foundation to your length of credit history and actually closing some of your longer held accounts can actually bring down your credit score over time. Now there is a trick that you can take advantage of if you want to speed this process up, but it will take another person. Whether it be a parent or a sibling who has their own credit card, they can put you as an authorized user under their account. Now you'll get your very own credit card with your own name on it, not their name, but any payments that you make on it will go under their account. Now this is a huge tip that you guys can take advantage of, especially if that person who's putting you as an authorized user has a long credit history, let's just say 10 years for example, then you too will also reap the benefits of those 10 years. Now the only drawback to this is that that authorized user has to trust you that you won't overspend and max out their cards because it is still under their account and if you max out their cards and they make a missed payment or late payment, that would bring down their credit score. Now with most banks, they don't have a age restriction when it comes to authorized users. Some do have an age restriction of maybe 13 or 15 years old, but you just want to double check for uh, whatever card that you're using. But for your parents who want to give your kids a great head start with having a great credit score, going down the authorized user path would be ideal. And if you don't trust your kids using a credit card just yet, you can still get uh, the authorized user card, put their name on the account and do what I said in step two, which is putting a few dollars on it every single month and paying it off on time and watch their credit score go up and you'll set them up with an excellent credit score when they're ready to use their own card. Now, a quick personal story of mine was when my mom put me under her Discover account as an authorized user, which is uh, this card right over here. And I believe I got this card when I was 15 years old. And if you take a look at it over here, it says that I am a member since 1993, which makes this account older than me. And again, it's just a really great tip that you guys can take advantage of to improve the length of your credit history. Now, the fourth and fifth factor would be variety of credit and types of credit. Now, with the last two factors, I'm only going to touch upon it briefly. But there's a common misconception that the more credit cards that you have, the worse your credit score will be. But that's just a common misconception. And actually, you want to have more credit cards. And I'm not saying to go out there and just start applying for 10 credit cards right now. But uh, apply for it, you know, over time. 
uh, maybe every three to four months you can get a new credit card but get a credit card that you're actually gonna or that you actually see value in if there's a good sign up bonus if there's great rewards and if you don't have to be spending money to hit a certain sign up bonus that you don't need to be spending money on uh, those are just some things to uh, take into consideration so far for me i have nine different credit cards but i really only use my american express platinum card and chase sapphire preferred card and the rest i just keep in a drawer but i still use i still use it just to um you know buy a snack or a drink every uh, once in a while just to keep the accounts open if you're young like me and not looking to purchase a house anytime soon then i would just focus on solidifying your credit card accounts and getting your credit score up to maybe of a 790 to maybe a 797 now if you're just doing it solely based off of credit cards it would be difficult to get it past uh, 800 because most times to pass that 800 mark or get it, or to get a perfect score of an 850 you'd have to have different types of credit meaning you would need to have like either a student loan car loans or a mortgage and if you're paying those off on time then you would be able to get past that 800 threshold but that's not it's not like a certain fact that's just a rough estimation and don't stress out too much about trying to achieve that perfect 850 credit score because really only 1.6 percent of americans have an 850 credit score but just having like a 750 to a 790 credit score would put you in an excellent position compared to the average american score of 711. well guys those were my tips on how to increase your credit score if you do follow my advice i love to hear your personal testimonies down in the comments below and just to hear if your credit score did go up after following these tips I hope this video added value to you guys. If it did, I appreciate a like and a sub. And maybe even consider sharing this video to someone who's wanting to improve their own credit score. I got a lot more videos planned for you guys, so stay tuned. But until next time, shoots.